oh, what can be done? Okay, uh, if you look at his stress or heat related uh, urban climate issues, there are only two things that you can do or you, you need to know. One is the heat side of the equation, that's the thermal part of it, and the other one is the dynamic side of it, which is the wind side. Okay, these two balance will give you the urban climate conditions of the city. Now, for planners and everybody else, you can do a number of things. You can change the albedo, so-called change the colour of the building, vegetation, shading, and also ventilation. And with these four uh, strategies, scientific strategies, you can do a number of things uh, by planners, by people, by government. Okay, If you do this, it will, it, will, it will change this and it will benefit whatever. And there are also the time scale and also the spatial scale you need to worry about. When you, when you need to do trees, uh, planting, or whatever, you need to do it everywhere. You can't just do it in one space and hope that everybody can go there. And, and on the other hand, you die where you don't have trees. So you have time scale and you have the space scale. This is the particular slide that will tell you, from a policy point of view, what you can do, how you can do it, and where you should do it, and for what. Okay. So if there is one slide that is most important in my talk, this is it. <laughs> I keep on telling students uh, uh, to copy it because one day they will need it. <laughs> now, with this understanding of thermal and dynamic uh, quality of, of uh, the urban climate, we start to do urban climate mapping for longer. With the map, you know where, what places are, where places are, things like that. You need to find. The, uh, uh, the, the, map, the, the idea of the map comes from Germany about 25 years ago. Uh, basically, it's about the thermal part and the dynamic part. And with this understanding, you create your city map so that you know where to build, what to build, and what not to build, and things like that. In Germany, of course, they, they start very early, and they have map for every city to guide them their planning policy. This is the so-called famous Tokyo Wall. But for me, it's nothing. Okay? <laughs> but they call it Tokyo Wall. Okay? And once that wall was built, the people behind complained. Okay. And when they complained, the government start to do something. And they start their own environmental research and create the Tokyo environmental map. And with that map, they are now trying to do a lot of things to the city. Like, for example, one is to create air park. So, and they start in 2000, and they have already policies on how buildings should be built, what kind of greening, what, kind, what way is the air park, and where the road should give way to, to air park and things like that. So they started uh, not too long ago, all, all because of the people's complaining about this so-called Tokyo War. If I, when I show them our Hong Kong War, uh, uh, they, they all like the picture because they, 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 they use my picture because they they they, they tell the they, 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 the government tell the people see. We have done a lot of things. We are very good because otherwise we have those kind of things. So we will stop complaining in Japan. And of course they don't come here anymore. <laughs> now, uh, 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 one of the important things of, of, of scientific understanding of the thermal part of the equation and the uh, dynamic part of the equation is, is basically because people feel the thermal part and the dynamic part together. So in our research we try to combine them together into a, what we call the physiological equivalent temperature. The temperature that is equivalent uh, to, a, to a body when you take into account the, the, the wind part and the temperature part. And there are sophisticated equation and heat balance and heat exchange model to govern that understanding. So we can link the two together. If you provide better ventilation, you can afford to have a higher uh, temperature, things like that. Otherwise, uh, the other way around is true as well. To do that, you need to do a lot of things. One of the things is to, to ask people what they want. Uh, we, we don't ask people what they want. We ask about 2,500 people on, on the street what they want. And we calibrate their neutral path, and as you say, the conditions that they think is comfortable. Uh, 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 I can say that the, 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 the people in Hong Kong is very tolerant of, uh, of the urban climate issues. But, but, but there is a limit, OK? There is a limit, OK? Beyond that, they will say no. Okay. And I can tell you that we have already gone past that limit. Mm -hmm. With that uh, physiological equivalent temperature understanding of um, putting together the thermal part and the dynamic part, we put in all the data of buildings, land use, topography, greenery, and things like that of Hong Kong uh, which, uh, into a GIS map, and then calibrate it into what we call the climatic map of Hong Kong. And we know where the wind comes from, and therefore we know how it 
behaves. And this eventually will be the urban climatic map of Hong Kong telling you where you should not buy the properties, for example. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, the peak is always good, okay? So don't worry about it. <laughs> you can't lose if you live there. <laughs> ah, so rich people don't have urban climate problem. Only poor people have it. And with that, then we also know that um, the meaning of the color. I mean, if you are living in a red color area, uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's time for you to move house. If, however, you live in the green part of the area, uh, try not to uh, uh, worsen it and things like that. So, so the, the map, the color of the map, has a number of uh, 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 meaning to it. This is how the map looks like. Uh, you can download this map from the home, uh, from the planning department website. They are very transparent, I must say, and then decide whether or not you should move house. Okay. Now, the one thing that I would like to talk about uh, it, it, from this map, you can deduce a lot of uh, information, which we are now uh, telling the government what or what not to do. But, but telling them is one thing; doing it is another thing. Keep on telling us, "Oh no, we can't do it. Oh, we can't do that. We can't do this." I can just keep on telling them. Now, the one thing that uh, is closer to home is the, the open space and greenery uh, idea. Now, I told the government that according to what we have found out, that the, the green space is of course good, open space is of course good, but you have to find a way to plan it in such a way that they are linked together. You cannot have isolated pockets of it, and that's it. And you must find a way to link them together so the benefits in terms of the dynamic movement of the, uh, of the atmosphere can, can somehow be benefit. Now, uh, I have to take off a number of uh, texts because they are still secret, so-called, according to the government, so I cannot show it to you. Uh, these are the three things which uh, is important to our urban climate. The first thing is, of course, green space. And, and there is a subtext here telling you how much green space uh, there should be. But within these four walls, I can tell you that uh, uh, it's a lot more than one square meter per person. Uh, and, and then, of course, the green, uh, the ground coverage, how buildings sit on the ground. Okay. Okay. So, and there is a there is a number here telling you what is better than the others. And the most important, I told the government, is this guy here: the proximity to green, uh, the green space or open space, and how they are connected. You cannot have just isolated. Uh, uh, pockets, you have to find to link them. You can see. Once you link them, the benefit is maximized. If you don't link them, the maximum the benefit is very localized. So it's no good to have one green space and not finding ways to link them. Now, okay, I have been climate clear last slide. Uh, open space, uh, scientifically speaking, uh, increased urban porosity. Okay, and air volume at the ground level, allowing better ventilation. Okay, linkage allows better connectivities and improve what we call the air mass exchange, so air can move through. Now, greening lowers the urban mean radiant temperature. The temperature is uh, coming back to you. The radiation increase the transfer increase the heat transfer from sensible heat to latent heat. Therefore, you don't feel latent heat. Okay, but you feel sensible heat. But the trees allows the, the heat to be translated from the sensible to later, okay? And therefore, improve uh, urban uh, uh, comfort. The tree canopy also provides shading. And, and scientifically, we know how much we need to do. Okay, it's a matter of whether or not the government wants to do it. Uh, actually, it's achievable, okay? But, but still, the government has to want to do it. Okay, so happy spacing and free.